let's look at this example of present value problem, not only in terms of just solving the problem with the correct formula and finding the right um, values, but also in terms of how to do it with the calculator. It says Ms. Smith, Smith buys a car costing $20,300. She agrees to make payments at the end of each monthly period for six years. She pays 9.65% interest compounded monthly. And we want to know what amount, uh, what's her amount of payment every month. There's a second question, but we're going to look at that later. The first thing that I would say about this is that, of course, it's a present value problem. All these car payment, house payment type problems are present value problems. Beyond that, you have to figure out what each thing is that will go into the formula. So, for instance, the, the cost of the car is, is the present value. That's $20,300. The payments are going to be uh, for six years, so little t is six. The interest rate is 9.65, so little r as a decimal is 0 0.0965. It's paid and compounded monthly, so m is 12. And we're looking for the amount of each payment, so that means we're looking for capital R. That's the periodic payment. Once we know that, it's simply a matter of, of plugging into the formula and being careful. So, for instance, we know that little i is little r over m, so that comes out to be uh, 0.0965 divided by 12, and that's about 0.0080417. I rounded off, but I used lots of decimal places because the larger these numbers get, the more decimal places you need in your answer. And since the calculator is doing all the hard work, carry lots of decimal places, and that way you'll assure yourself of being correct to the nearest cent when you finally do round off. And finally, n is m times t, which would be 12 times 6 is 72. Plug those values in. And I guess one more thing. Even though we don't know capital R, the periodic payment, that's what we're looking for, we do know that the, that the present value is 20,300. So when we, when we take these values that we just talked about or calculated and plug them into the formula, we end up with 20,300 is equal to R times this huge nasty looking quantity that we'll do on the calculator. Now here's where the calculator comes in. Start here with the amount in parentheses in the numerator. And you could probably do the addition in your head, but I'll go ahead and do it. 1 plus 0 0.008417 equals. Now you're going to raise it to the negative 72 power. You cannot type in a negative 72 directly. So what you do is you do the power button and type in a positive 72 and then use the plus minus key to make it a negative 72. Now you're ready to hit equal which does that calculation for you. The next thing you notice is that this number should be negative. That minus changes the sign. So I can use the plus minus key yet again to make it negative as it should be. And then I simply want to add this one on. So now I say plus one equals. And that quantity, 0.43, etc., is the entire numerator in the brackets here. So I need to divide that by 0.008417 equals. That's the entire quantity in brackets. Now, what's going to happen with that number, if you keep looking at this, is in order to solve for r, that 54.49, etc., is going to be divided by, you're going to divide both sides by that to find out what the periodic payment is. Now, if you're going to write it down, take lots of decimal places. Again, the calculator is going to do the hard work, so you don't want to round it off so much that you're not right to the nearest cent when you finally do round. My suggestion, however, is to do something a little different, and that is to take uh, the division upside down. You really want to do 20,300 divided by 54.49, etc. But since the 54.49 is already in there, you don't have to do it this way. My suggestion is to divide backwards. So I would divide it by 20,300 get equals. Now that's upside down. The only reason I can get away with that is that there is a button usually labeled 1 over x, and on this Windows calculator it certainly is, that flips it back upside, right side up. 
So that turns the calculation that I did upside down back right side up and it just makes the calculation easier. You don't have to do it that way but that's certainly my preference. So rounded off the nearest cent, the monthly payment is $372.50. Now as I mentioned a few minutes ago, there, there was also a second question. So let's look at that. The second question said, find the total amount of interest Mrs. Smith will pay. Now, in order to do that, you've got to understand what the interest is. The interest is the amount she paid in over the course of that um, loan minus what the car was actually priced. Now we know that the car was priced at uh, $20,300. So the interest that, that Ms. Smith paid is what, how much she paid in altogether minus the actual price of the car. So the really challenging part, if there is one, is to figure out the total price of that uh, that she paid in over the course of that loan. And that's really not hard either. In particular, her total interest is going to be her monthly payment. She paid $372.50 a month for 12 months out of the year for six years. So it's $372.50 times 12 times 6. And then, of course, we're going to take the, the price of the car off at the end. I'll actually do that on the calculator, although I, you can already see the answer. But if you take 372.50, notice I'm taking the amount rounded to the nearest cent. I'm not taking that long decimal value that before I rounded it off because that's not what she actually paid. She actually paid 372.50 a month. So I'm going to multiply that by 12, and then I'm going to multiply that by 6. So she actually paid in $26,820 over the course of that loan. Of that, $20,300 was the actual price of the car, so if you subtract that away, you're left with just interest. $20,300 equals. So Mrs. Smith, over the course of that loan, paid a total interest of $6,520.